Hi, and welcome to Prophetic Nights with Prophet Pietrus and Prophet Kajal. It's lovely to have you join us tonight. The topic is on let it go. Let go and embrace God's best for your life. Sometimes we hold on to things that we shouldn't be holding on to, and those things hinder us from God's blessings. Now, Jesus himself said in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And in Luke 17, 1, it says, he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. So some of us are holding on to offense and unforgiveness and negative emotions, which make us despondent and, and afraid and full of resentment and bitterness. But you've got to understand that as long as we are on this earth, on this planet, Jesus in himself said, trouble will come, offenses will come. But we must be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. So let's look at some of the things we should be letting go of. I'm going to firstly look at letting go of unforgiveness. So what is unforgiveness? Unforgiveness is when somebody wrongs you or does something to hurt you, you rehearse and nurse and churn it like butter in your heart and in your memory, in your soul, and then it becomes an ugly emotion that will rob you of your sleep. It will rob you of joy. And the Bible says that Jesus gave us peace. He didn't give us a tormented mind. So when you have unforgiveness, you are actually choosing not to have compassion on somebody that has done you wrong or who has offended you. And, you know, in our counseling sessions, Prophet and I, we come across many people that hold unforgiveness for years and years and years. They can be 70 years old. And still remember something that happened when they were 20. So we need to remember that unforgiveness is not a godly thing. Matthew 18.33 says, Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? So we must show compassion to others just as God has shown us mercy. Now, let's look at some reasons why we hold on to unforgiveness. First of all, these are just some observations and experiences we've had over the years, counseling people. We feel that if we forgive a person, then we are letting them off the hook for the wrong that they have done. So we feel like, okay, this person dad me has done an incredible injustice to me. If I forgive them, it's like they are going off scot-free and I am the one that has got the hurt and the pain and the loss or whatever it is. But what we don't realize is, and there's a lovely teaching on YouTube about unforgiveness, the poison that will take you to hell. It's if you hold on to this unforgiveness, it's like you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Then some other reasons we hold on to it. We feel like we have a right to be angry with him and we want justice. We want everyone to know what this person did, how badly they've hurt us and offended us, how much we've lost and it just becomes this big emotional boulder that is a heavy weight in our lives. Then we feel like we have a right to be angry at them. Like I have a right to be angry because this person did this and this and this. And the worst thing is people feel vulnerable. They feel like if they forgive, they are giving back power to the person or the thing or the organization or the government or whoever hurt them. It's as if we're giving away our power and they can hurt us again. But this is not true. These are lies from the devil that keep us in bondage and in the bondage of unforgiveness. Now, other times we feel like if we forgive them, then we're not going to get paid back for the wrong that they've done. And, and you know, the kingdom of God doesn't work like the legal, like the, the way the world works and the way human beings think. God says, forgive. God says, bless those who have hurt you. God says, let it go. And I am the avenger. So we need to learn that if these are the reasons we're holding on to unforgiveness, it's not legal reasons. We need to look at it lo like logically with our head and not our emotional pain and say, I need to let this go for my own good, for my own salvation, for my own right standing with the Lord. Now, let's look at what the Bible says. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 14 to 15, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, 
your father will not forgive your sins. Now, that is very serious because if you are a born-again Christian, you need to forgive because you're gonna, you want to go to heaven, right? But the Bible says you will not get forgiven. Your own sin won't be forgiven. Now, that is very scary. I would forgive just because I don't want my own sin not to be forgiven. Colossians 3.13 says, Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. So we must realize that it is a commandment of God and obedience to his word that, that is a reason to forgive. Proverbs 19.11, this is a nice scripture. It says, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. So the Bible also says in James, if you lack wisdom, ask God. He gives generously to all who ask him. So a person that overlooks an offense is a wise person. So if we're not overlooking offenses easily, maybe we need to ask God for, for wisdom. So here's some practical steps on how to let go of unforgiveness. First of all, ask God to forgive you for harboring unforgiveness and offense towards the other person. Now, some people can be offended at their bosses, at an organization, like a company that let them go because they were retrenched. So you need to say, I will forgive this organization, this person, this pastor, this church, whatever it is. So firstly, ask God to forgive you for the offense and unforgiveness. Then you make a decision from your heart to forgive them. A decision is not a feeling. A decision is a choice. Then you say out loud, I release forgiveness to Joe Soap for what they have done to me. You can also say, I choose to release forgiveness because then you are activating your own will. Some people need to breathe out deeply to let it go. It's not spiritual. It's not scriptural. It's just a human reaction because some people have so much anxiety that their chest is actually like heavy and tight, like they can't breathe. And when you say, I choose to forgive, there's this feeling of peace and release that comes over you. So sometimes you just need to say, I let it go. Then remain quiet for a few seconds and allow the Holy Spirit to bring his peace back. Because when you are in unforgiveness, you don't have mental peace. And then enjoy the peace that comes. Now, if you don't feel it, it's okay. You've made the decision to forgive. And that is an excellent thing. Now, something that God taught me a long time ago was, every time the thought comes to your mind of what this person did, what happened, how they wronged you, you need to forgive them. Matthew 18, 21 to 22 says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And I said to God, this person's not even going to come once to ask for forgiveness, or maybe they'll come once, but not more than that. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, every time the thought about them comes and you feel anxiety or unforgiveness, say, I choose to forgive. And eventually, all that ugly emotion will be gone. So what happens when we don't forgive? Eesh, this is an ouchie. We are handed over to the torturers. Let's look at it. Matthew 18, 34 to 35. In, his, in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father, now this is Jesus talking about God. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Now to give you a background, you can go read it in Matthew 18. There was this man who owed the master some money, like say five 500 rand. And he said, throw him in jail until he pays me. But he begged and pleaded, please have mercy on me, forgive me. So the master said, okay, I forgive your 500 rand debt or $500 debt. Then because he was now free of his $500 debt, he went to somebody who owed him $5,000 and demanded that person pay him. Now, when his original master heard about this, he got very angry and made them um, and made him pay back the whole amount. So I got this mixed up. So his he owed his master five thousand dollars, and the person that owed him money owed him five hundred dollars. Sorry, I confused the two. 
So he owed 5,000, but somebody owed him 500. Now he got forgiven of the 5,000 rand or $5,000 debt. And then he goes and tortures and makes this person's life miserable because he wants his $500 back. So when his master found out that he had no mercy, he took him to jail and put him in there and said he must be tortured till he pays back that large amount that he owes. So Jesus is saying, if you don't forgive your brother the little sin he did against you, I will not forgive you the big sin you did against me. And I'll hand you over to the torturers. Now, in our modern world, what are the torturers in today's terms? So some ways unforgiveness will torture you, in inverted commas. You'll suffer with mental torment, depression, constant fear, sleeplessness, sickness, joint aches. Eventually, you will get cancer and die. And that's not a good place to be. So unforgiveness, there's no reward for you for having unforgiveness. Now, forgiving yourself. People who are perfectionists, procrastinators, and goody two-shoes find it harder to forgive themselves than other personality types. Now, guess what? This is pride. Shocking, right? God told me it's pride. Now, remember 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you have made a mistake, stop beating yourself up. Go to God, confess, Lord, I messed up. He will forgive you and then forgive yourself. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to say, I choose by a decision of my will to forgive myself and let this go. In my own life, this is a big thing which I need to constantly deal with and say, Lord, I repent of this pride and I forgive myself. So you need to ask God to forgive you for the mistake, then forgive you for pride. Then also ask God to forgive you for thinking that you're too good to make a mistake and get deceived. You know, like, oh, I'm so perfect and I live such a perfect life. I can't make mistakes. That's not, we are human. We will make mistakes. And then you say, I choose to forgive myself. Then feel the emotions because maybe the thing you did is so bad, you feel like just crying. Then cry and let it go, get it out of your system and move on. You know, something somebody prayed with me once, she put it, rolled up tissue in my hand and she said now let it go and then she took the tissue away and it actually had a psychological effect on my heart enabling me to let that thing go then you can ask god for the strategy to recover from the mistake that you made so whatever it is maybe you got into debt you shouldn't have got into maybe you trusted the wrong person maybe you did something that god never told you to do he is merciful and compassionate. He will give you the strategy to recover from your mistake. Don't stay there. Also ask God for mercy and grace for any negative harvest. Because every decision and action comes with consequent harvest. If it's a good decision, you'll get a good harvest. If it's a bad decision, you'll get a bad harvest. Now, God is merciful. There's a lovely teaching on how, can, how to pray that God, God's mercy overrides bad harvest, how to stop bad harvest, and then choose to move forward. Now, you have to move on. Isaiah 43, 18, 21 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So number one, forget. Let it Go. Do not dwell. Dwell means to stay, to make camp, to put roots down, to stay there and park there and suffer and wallow and cry and be miserable. Don't do that. Move. Then tell yourself God is doing a new thing. Acknowledge that God is making a way. Maybe you had a terrible childhood and terrible life and married the wrong person and suffering. God is saying, move on. Don't park there. If it's over, let it go. Acknowledge God is making a way and confess that your covenant partner will make a way and there will be blessings and provision for you again. Amen. You need to make these decisions and do these things to get free. Now we serve a God of mercy. Say yay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lamentations 3, 22, 23 says the steadfast love. Now steadfast means it never changes. God's love never changes. 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Psalms 116, 5 says, The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. God loves us. So God knew you would mess up. His mercies are new every morning. Humble yourself and accept his mercy and grace. And don't park there. Now, the price of unforgiveness is too high. It is hell. It is torment for your soul while you're on earth. Just let it go. Now, letting go of bitterness. Some people ask, what is bitterness? Bitterness is when you allow unforgiveness to churn like butter in your soul. Now, why do I say churn like butter? Because you make butter from milk by churning and churning and churning it until it turns into butter. So you'll get the offense. Somebody will say something. Something will happen. You choose not to forgive them. So it goes from offense to unforgiveness. It becomes anger because now you realize what they've done. And it becomes deep hurt and a wound. Then it becomes resentment, churning, churning, churning. These are all steps in your churning. And then you have bitterness. Now, when you have bitterness, you'll see it on your face. Your face will not be radiant when you have bitterness. And the Bible says those who look to the Lord, their faces are radiant. Now, if your face is sour like you drank lemon juice, ask God to heal your soul. So when we don't forgive immediately, it turns into bitterness and your body starts making cortisol and you start creating an environment where cancer can start living. And that's how a lot of people get cancer and arthritis and all of these things because their soul is churning all the negative things that happen to them. We need to let it go. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14 to 15, pursue peace. Pursue means to actively follow and find and get something. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Now, bitterness will cause you to sin because you'll say negative things, You'll be in unforgiveness. And the Bible says very clearly, don't allow it to happen. So keep your heart free from angst. Angst is a feeling of persistent worry and anxiety and negative things. Don't replay incidents in your mind. There's a nice teaching called Don't Catch That Train. When something bad happens to you, we have a tendency to keep replaying this, what they said, what they did, what happened, what they did to me. Don't do that. Choose to think about God and his goodness and his mercy and forgive them and let it go. Don't allow a negative incident to get to your heart. So process it in your logical brain and don't allow it to hurt you. You can do that. You do that by training yourself to do that. Then Ephesians 4.31, let all bitterness and wrath, wrath is anger, and clamor, clamor is uproar. Like you, every new person that comes to visit you, you have an uproar about the negative thing that happened to you. And slander, talking bad about people, be put away from you along with all malice, which is hatred. Now, Jesus said, if you hate your brother, it is like murder. Murderers don't go to heaven. It's a serious thing to be a Christian, hey? So we need to let go and let God. Sometimes, now this part of my teaching is all about trusting God to deal with problems in your life. Because what we do sometimes is, we want to play Holy Ghost Junior and fix fix the person we're praying for, fix the child, fix this, fix that in our own strength. But we need to let go and let God. Now, we can only trust somebody that we know. If you don't know the Lord as a deliverer, you can't trust him that he will deliver you. If you don't know him as a loving God, you will expect him to bash you over the head when you make a mistake. If you don't know him as provider, you will follow your own heart and your own Fear will lead you into the wrong avenues to make money. So you need to learn who your God is. And how do you do that? Find scriptures that describe God's nature. Get to know him. You only get to know someone when you spend time with them. Find out about how they behave. How they, And the Bible is full of how God behaves. You know, every time Israel sinned, God got angry with them. And then he drew them back with this deep love. That's the nature of our God. As you overcome trials and problems in your life, you will discover his mercy, grace, and healing. So every time you overcome something, you will know God as that person. 
He delivered me. He gave me a new job. He saved me from my own foolishness. Don't keep God on the shelf of your heart. Include him in all your day-to-day -day activities and decisions, no matter how small. You know, some people only access God when they have a problem. Like, okay, I'll pray now because there's a problem. But you can talk to him the whole day. He loves that. Remember, you made him the Lord of, of your life. You say, Jesus is Lord over my life. So if someone is Lord, you can't make the decisions without them. You've got to get them and ask them, is this what you want for me, Lord? What happens if you don't let go? Well, Hebrews 12 one says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this, how? By keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. So unforgiveness, despair, hopelessness, beating yourself up will be heavy weights that slow you down and hinder you from finishing your race. So we need to let it go. So in conclusion, God has a plan and purpose for you on this earth. Don't allow these things to hold you back. Make a decision to let it go. And a decision is not a feeling, it's a choice. And before we end, I just want to say this one thing. That if God has called you to write books or to be a public speaker or be a teacher, and if you are weighed down with unforgiveness, beating yourself up, feeling miserable about your bad decisions in life, you are hindering your destiny. You are delaying your destiny because you're sitting, you are dwelling in the former things that God said, forget the former things. See, I am doing a new thing. So it's really up to you to make a decision that today, Lord, this is the last time that I sit here and wallow in this pit. You are my loving father and you are going to take me through this and I'm going to reach my destiny. So I pray and believe that this, meeting, this teaching has touched you and God bless you.